That's what I love about this study is that you were taking a really good look at it. if people get these books, how successful are they without being forced into, into eating that way. So what happened? Well, let me just build on what you said just for a moment. There's a guy, Kevin Hall, that I really love who does great studies. And he usually doesn't do any more than 20 people at a time because they're incarcerated. He uses the word domiciled. I think it's incarcerated. He incarcerates these people in a building. There's bars on the windows and they can't leave. And there's a chamber that they have to go into. And he can do a lot of very rigorous stuff that's not very generalizable. And then I do stuff that's very generalizable. It's not nearly as rigorous as him. But what I really like about Kevin's studies is is he makes them as generalizable as possible for a rigorous, controlled, domiciled study. And I really try to make my generalizable studies as rigorous as possible. I really try to apply all the tools in science we have to define the diets well and get adherence the best we can and be taking blood samples and other factors and surveys to see who's more and less adherent. So in my as maximally rigorous as I could generalizable study, we got 300 women to be in this study for a year and there was almost no average difference between them at the end. If there was, there's a little advantage for the group that did Atkins. They actually sort of lost more weight at the six month mark. If you look at a graphic of what happened, the weight was actually coming back on faster for the other group. So by 12 months, the only actual statistically significant difference was between Atkins and Zone, which is weird. Those were the two low carb diets. If there was really a low carb, low fat thing, it should have been between Ornish, which was the lowest fat, and Atkins, which was the lowest carb. And those actually weren't different. And we had a fourth diet that was more of a health professional's approach. It was called the Learn Manual by Kelly Brownell. It's really what a healthcare professional would probably use. And it was in between Learn and Zone in terms of fat and carbs. So on the one hand, it was, it was a little disappointing that there wasn't a clear winner. On the other hand, it gave me a very practical public health message. There isn't any one diet that seems to work for everybody. And so there isn't one thing that you should all try. The mind-blowing thing for me was I had a colleague at the time, Simon, who was always pushing me to present my data in different ways. And one of them is what I call a waterfall plot. And instead of the typical thing, which is you show a bar of the average change and some magnitude of variability with what we call error bars. So why don't you just plot every woman on the graph, make every woman a bar and show how much weight she lost or gained because a small proportion of them gained weight. And so what I saw from this first study was that if you looked at the pattern of weight change, which on average was only a couple kilos different for each group, on every group, somebody lost 25 or 30 kilos, somebody gained five or 10 kilos. And those weren't outliers. It was an absolute continuum from one end to the other. And so I just, oh my God, maybe what's going on here is there are certain people who should be on certain diets. And so that sort of generated the hypothesis. That's what I should be looking for, not for the best diet. I should be trying to look for things that would predict if you were predisposed to do better on one diet or another. That was my big takeaway from A to Z. 